uh, Paul has some support bits. Question for Johnny. Um, I was just hoping, could you put into words kind of what this competition means for you personally and for, for Leinster as a whole? Um, it's, it's the pinnacle, isn't it, uh, for us every year. Um, it's been an incredible competition over the last however many years, 20, 25, 30 years, and uh, it never lets down in terms of spectacle. And uh, So, yeah, it's, it's always something we speak about at the start of every year. Um, we give both competitions great respect, but ultimately this is the, this is the big one. Right holder. <laughs> this is a bit awkward. Uh, Leo, um, how much of a factor do you think the heat will be, and have you been able to do anything to, to prepare for that? Um, it's, it's not too bad out there. Like, I think, um, what, 5.45 tomorrow, so the, the pitch is in the shade. Uh, when we turned up here earlier on, it's, it's overcast, so there's, there's no sun. When the sun is there, it it's feels a lot warmer for sure. Um, but yeah, the conditions will be will be great. You know, it'll, it'll be a um, fantastic occasion. Two great teams going at it, so I, I don't see a major issue. Um, you know, it's it's warm, but like it's it's I'd rather that. Yesterday we, when we left, <laughs> it was lashing rain when we were out to train. So I'd much rather a bit more warmth in the air. I think all the lads would prefer that as well. So um, I think it should add to the, the occasion. The conditions will be excellent. I think tomorrow. Uh, hi, Leo. Uh, when did Tig and James get the all-clear to play? Uh, they never didn't have the cleared all-clear to play, so no, they've they been okay, the two of them. Um, so, yeah, not looking forward to seeing the two lads go. But they, they weren't a major concern from our point of view. Contrary to some opinion out there, maybe. But <laughs> Johnny, what would it mean to captain Leinster to a Heineken Cup? Obviously, you've won it several times, but what would it actually mean to, to be captain? Maybe a little bit more, yeah. Um, obviously, I answered these questions in, in, in Newcastle before we played Saracens as well. It's, it, would be, it would be very special, um, but it's not something that uh, I've talked too much about. It's something that, uh, obviously, you feel inside because you... You always take responsibility, but um, yeah, it would be special. But uh, you'd add your your name to the list of some some great players that have that have played the game. Uh, you know that that have captained Leinster at the Heineken Cup. So um, yeah, it would be very special. Yeah. Um, how has the how's the team kept their emotions in check f um, last year, following your opponents this year, uh, who knocked you out in the semi-finals? Um, yeah, like it was, we were usually disappointed in the end to the tournament last year because it was, it was such a strange year um, on lots of different fronts. Um, you know, when, you, obviously when we arrived at La Rochelle for that semi-final, you, you, when we got off the bus, there was a huge um, crowd of La Rochelle supporters. So you could see it like it meant a huge amount of them. And then you go into the stadium and the stadium is empty. Um, and yeah, we, we have a lot of frustrations over that game, the way we, we manage certain things ourselves. So it's great to be back at this stage of the tournament. Obviously, La Rochelle went on, played against Toulouse in the final of Europe and the final of the top 14. So, you know, they've got to this stage again. Um, you know, they've had a few changes in terms of their backroom. Um, but yeah, they, there's, it's still going to be a great challenge for our guys. You know, we, we were huge disappointed the way last season ended. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears goes into a campaign to get you back to this point. And even the the, the tournament this year, we've it's it's had challenges. If you think particularly around uh, that Christmas period, um, and you know, with a lot of games being postponed and cancelled and all the rest. So, um, but you know, post Six Nations, you know, the the format, the way it's gone. Um, with crowds coming back, you, you just get that real sense of excitement again. Um, and it's an amazing honour for us to be here. Um, but there's, it's off the back of so much hard work, sacrifice, um, you know, dedication, the attention to detail, all the rest. And you know, you've got two teams that are usually motivated to win this tournament now. So um, we're hoping for a great occasion. Um, you kind of get to this point now, it's just you're just dying for the kickoff, really, um, and let the, the players go at it. Um, everyone has to be able to deal with different disruptions over the course of of a long season, and that's you know, some players, you know, are unfortunate they drop out at different stages during the course of the season. But 
Um, but that's where you need the, the squad, the collective, all the hard work that goes into uh, making sure that the player's in the best possible shape now. So for us now, it's just going ahead and delivering their best game, I think, as the players. But La Rochelle, I'm sure, will be saying something very, very similar. Hi, one for James. Um, looking at the starting lineups and seeing someone like Will Skelton lining up as the opposite number, how exciting is that for you ahead of a game like this? <clears throat> yeah, it's exciting, yeah. Um, he's he's a crucial member of their forward pack, their squad, really. Um, so uh, so having him back obviously will be a big boost, boost for them. Um, but, yeah, he's an incredibly physical player, very effective on both sides of the ball. Um, and you look at their pack, they have some... Some world class players there really, you know, between Skelton and Aldred and Antonio, um, you know, some very powerful athletes there. So um so yeah, it's a it's a big challenge for us as a pack for tomorrow, so we're excited. Bonjour Leo. J'ai un peu la même question uh, par rapport uh, au retour de Willy Skelton. Il était blessé pendant plusieurs semaines, il revient. Qu'est-ce que, selon vous, ça change dans l'équipe de La Rochelle Et il y a eu beaucoup de, peut-être de, de bluff un petit peu euh, au niveau de la compo d'équipe et des absents de La Rochelle ces dernières semaines. Est-ce que vous pensez que l'équipe qui est annoncée là aujourd'hui à 13h, à 1h, sera la même au coup d'envoi demain, euh, demain euh, au Stade Vélodrome Avec le même demi de mêlée peut-être <laughs> We've we been prepared for that not to be the same, correct um, that's been announced. Um, and that's the thing, you've got to plan for all the different eventualities. Um, we expected Skelton to be involved. Um, obviously, there was yeah, different rumours going on. But anyway, like for us, it's um, you know, the, the team, as I said to this gentleman over here, that we came up against last year. Um, and you know, they're a team we've watched a hell of a lot of over the course of this year because how they were progressing in the tournament. You know, if you want to win this tournament, you've got to play against the best teams, and La Rochelle are one of the best teams that are out there. So, um, But, yeah, it's a great challenge. You know, as, as James said, Will Skelton, he's a big physical man for sure. Uh, Antonio as well. The, the, the two of them are very powerful players. Um, but, yeah, Ian, it's important that we try and deal with those guys. But it's similar to when we talked about going into the semi-final. It's making sure we understand how we can impose our own game as well. So we want to make sure we try and impose our game uh, tomorrow. And, um, yeah, as I said, it's a great challenge. Um, just looking forward to getting going now and seeing the players go at it. Um, because, as I said, there's, there's a lot of quality players on show. Um, and everyone will be desperate to win. You know, everyone will be desperate to win. But it's making sure you deliver on the basics of the game. Um, get all our detail and try and execute our plan to the best of our ability. Oui, une question pour Léo aussi. Pardon. Oui, Léo, pour rebondir sur, sur cette question, est-ce que le fait de... Les doutes qui ont entouré la présence de Tawera Carbarlo ont changé quelque chose pour vous cette semaine Et si son absence se confirme demain au coup d'envoi, qu'est-ce que cela change selon vous dans, dans le jeu de, de La Rochelle um, Yeah, like so <coughs> with Kerr Barlow, yeah, yeah, maybe he will play tomorrow. I, I don't know. Um, you want to ask the people coming in <laughs> for the press conference next. Um, but it, with a playing with a broken hand, like it's it's going to be pretty challenging for a nine more than any other position on the field, I would imagine. Um, you know, so with Bergeon, he's he's a good young player that'll come in to replace him. Um, I know he went off last week, um, around sixty minutes as well, and had to be replaced. So again, how what sort of condition he's in, I'm, I'm not sure either. So, um, but for us, yeah, like we've tried to put a, together a plan to pressurize the nines, the halfbacks in general. Um, so again, it's just to try and execute on the plan. Um, you know, Bergeon is a good young player, but again, it's important that he, he feels the pressure. Kerr Barlow, hugely experienced player, obviously played for the All Blacks, um, huge signing for La Rochelle, a big presence over the last couple of seasons. Um, so if he's, he's not there, I'm sure he will be a loss, but again, we'll see what team runs out at uh, 5.45 tomorrow. <laughs> Johnny, um, any contact with Raj this week, or are you both keeping your heads down? Uh, no, uh, not 
Uh, not too much, just a text. Um, but uh, no, look, he's done a fantastic job with them. Um, fair play to him, uh, getting three finals in a row um, is, is, a, is a great achievement. With a team that, you know, historically wasn't a powerhouse of France, but, you know, and I think someone like John O'Gibbs uh, needs to take huge credit for that as well, uh, for the work that he's done over over the last couple of years. We know him well, obviously. Um, so, yeah, look, they're, they're a team to be reckoned with, and uh, they obviously knocked us out last year, so that's all our focus on that. My, myself and Rog, I don't even know how it's a thing, considering I'm a player and he's a coach. I thought the Contepomi clash would have been more interesting, <laughs> uh, to be honest. And I don't think they've been in touch this week. <laughs> and Johnny, you have a couple of young players in the squad who are preparing to play their first Champions Cup final. What can you do to prepare them for what to expect in terms of atmosphere, pressure, and everything that comes with an occasion like this? Yeah, they're young, but they've had experiences, haven't they, in terms of a lot of them have played international rugby. So it's, it's in comparison to that, really, um, that it's the same as a test match. The atmosphere will be the same. The, it'll actually be probably more than an international. The atmosphere, you know, in terms of the La Rochelle support, fantastic. You see them every game turning up at home. Our support, uh, despite how difficult it would be to get here, um, we'll still have a good showing, I'm sure, um, like we always do. So it's that kind of bigger atmosphere in many ways. Um, so they're used to it. Um, we obviously had a great atmosphere in the last game. We had a great atmosphere over Welford Road. So they're picking up experiences all the time. Um, and it's really like Leo said, it comes down to the basics on the big day, nailing your your jobs, nailing your chances, really. Who takes your chances the best? Even go back to that Saracens game, we had some chances, didn't we? Uh, started the second half, uh, we didn't quite take them. A couple of decisions go against us, and suddenly you're chasing the game. And um, yeah, that was tough to take. So yeah, uh, basics is the key. Question for James, please. Um, about the, the breakdowns, what's your opinion about the, the key, uh, the key uh, sector? What's my opinion on, on the breakdown? Tomorrow? Yes, the, break, the yeah. breakdown. Right. breakdowns. Um, it's obviously a very important area for us. Um, you know, when we want to play quick and we want to play to space early, we need to be, we need to be early, we need to be really effective there. Um, and probably one of La Rochelle's strengths is their work um, in the rook, you know, particularly the defensive rook. Um, you know, they have a number of guys there that are very, very good over the ball. Um, so it's important we try to, to deal with those guys as best we can tomorrow because if if we want to play quick um, and play the type of rugby that we, you know, we've been pretty good at over the last few weeks, um, you know, we'll have to be very, very good there, very early there. Um, and we, if we're not, um, you know, it'll be very hard to, to impose ourselves. Hey, Johnny, uh, just two questions. Um, first, what did you text, Raj? He texted me. Oh. <laughs> no, he just asked me for a coffee, but the, the times didn't allow. Um, very busy today. And uh, just, I mean, you've obviously been here before. Is there anything different about the build-up to this one or what it means? No, it's it's it's. You know, you think when you get a little bit older, you'd be a bit more relaxed. I think it's been the opposite. Um, when you know it's your second last chance to try and win this, it's, uh, it's you know, puts a bit more pressure on. But, you know, in, the good thing is you, you learn how to deal with it. Um, but, it, yeah, it's been a, a, as a build-up to a huge game is. It's nervous. It's uh, excited in the same, you know, uh, in the same way. And it's, uh, it's tough at times. You know, you, you torture yourself sometimes in the build-up, but hopefully it'll all be worth it to come uh, come kick off. Once the game starts, the nerves go out the window and you just get into the into the game, and, and it's like every other game. Uh, question for Johnny. Um, in your opinion, at full-time, where do you think the game will be won and lost, um, and why? Same as... Uh, most games up front, obviously, uh, at set piece would be a huge battle, breakdown followed uh, behind that. And then, like I said previously, in these big games, you, you're going to have a certain amount of chances and how clinical you are to take them uh, will be key. So probably those three areas, I think, yeah. 
a question for James. James, um, if it develops into a very tight physical game, are Leinster better prepared for that now than maybe against Saracens or uh, La Rochelle in the past? Um, so here we go, but um, I, I like to think so, yeah. Um, no, it's, it's for us, it's just understanding the, pro the process, like people talk about being physical and um, these kind of forward games, it's, it's understanding you know, what that actually looks like. Um, it's not just about saying, well, let's be physical, it's understanding the, you know, how do you actually get to that point. Um, so for us as, as a forward pack, it's, it's, it's been really accurate with our line out um, on, on both sides. Um, you know, it's defensively, it's working early, it's setting early, it's being connected, it's scanning, all these little bits that allow us to be physical. Um, you know, as I, as I mentioned, the rook, it's it's um, it's arriving early, it's not watching and waiting. Um, you know, so it's making sure that we're we're nailing on the process that allows us to be uh, allows us to kind of impose ourselves um, as a forward pack. Uh, if that makes sense. Uh, Johnny, you can, please, if you please. Sorry. It's important to win a Champions Cup, but is it not very important to win a fifth Champions Cup and to beat the record of Toulouse before that this competition changes a little bit with the arrival of the clubs of the South African clubs the next year? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't uh, fully understand the question. In terms of, it, it's important for us to win the fifth star because it puts us on on par with Toulouse, um, definitely. Um, and, and we want to be recognised as as one of the best teams in Europe. Obviously, we are with, with four stars, but to, to put us, you know, it hurt us a lot last year because we felt we had a chance to play them in the final and, and go for the fifth star against each other. Um, and that wasn't to be. Um, so, yeah, it's a... It's a it would be a big milestone for the club, um, and it would be yeah fantastic for them, for us. One more question for Leinster, please. Uh, hi, Johnny. Um, just uh, since you won the first one in '09, how much tougher has it become to win this thing? It's incredibly tough. It's it's tough every year. You know, you, I, I I admit at the start when we won it, um, we had a period of success. We won three and four, and you kind of think, wow, this is. This is easy, and then and then you go away, and, and and you don't have it for for so long, and then you have so many tough days. At, on on you know you get so close at times. You know talk about semi-finals uh, recently, finals, um, and it just proves how hard it is. Teams come out of out of nowhere. You look at La Rochelle, like um, what they've done over the last few years. Um, you know Saracens will be back, so it gets tougher and tougher uh, every year. Uh, the likes of Racing. You know, still desperate to win their first, and and they'll come back stronger. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's an incredible competition. Uh, no matter what the format, um, it's it, it leads to these days, and, and it'll be a, a big spectacle tomorrow, and I'm sure a great game. Okay, thanks to Leo and John and James. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.